Welcome to The Economy Magazine. I'm Benjamin Chong Alfares with a quick overview of what's new in the global economy. Coming up, gold booms in Liberia, though government regulation is sorely lacking. And Toyota City diversifies to include other industries. First, the headlines. European shares boomed on Tuesday following comments by European Central Bank board members, but the euro slid. European bank officials said the speed at which bond prices recently reversed was worrisome. They also noted the bank would moderately front-load bond purchases to boost market liquidity in the summer and that it was ready to go further to meet its inflation target. The euro slipped more than 1% against the dollar after the comments were published. But the stock's Europe 600 in early trade rose 1.5% with Germany's export-heavy DAX leading the pack for a second consecutive day. Chinese Prime Minister Li Keqiang began a three-day visit to Brazil on Monday, armed with a promise of $50 billion in infrastructure investments. The anticipated investment is a major boon for Brazil, haunted by poor growth and spiraling inflation, as it prepares to host South America's first-ever Olympic Games next year. Chinese trade with Brazil has grown exponentially over the past decade, with the Asian giant becoming Brazil's main trading partner in 2009. Sino-Brazilian trade mushroomed from $6.5 billion in 2003 to $83.3 billion in 2012. And Brasilia hopes China's role in its economy will continue to grow. China is Brazil's main trade partner. However, it is the 12th largest investor in Brazil. For many reasons, China can become the biggest investor in Brazil. Greece's government said it will pay public sector wages and pensions in May, but wants an agreement with creditors by the end of the month. Government spokesman Gabriel Sacleridis said Athens will service all its obligations but it would not sign a third bailout program. Greek finance minister Yanis Varoufakis proposed Europe's bailout fund pay back the country's maturing government bonds to overcome a funding crunch. The Greek bonds held by the ECB worth 27 billion euros intensified the country's funding gap and blocked Greece from taking part in the bank's bond buying program. Greece and its creditors have been locked in talks for months on a cash for reforms deal, with discussions hung up over the government's red lines on labor and pension reform. Government promised a better deal to the Greek people while staying within the euro, but instead it looks that they are bringing a worse deal and with another new bailout or even bankruptcy. It promised that it would receive financial aid without a bailout, and on February 20th it ended up extending the bailout without getting any money. Power outages are the biggest break on South Africa's economic growth, Finance Minister Nklankla Nene said on Monday. South Africa is forecast to grow 2 percent this year, for far below the rate needed to ease high unemployment and growing frustration. State-owned power company ESCOM, which generates more than 95 percent of the country's electricity, has been weakened by years of underinvestment and aging infrastructure. Factories, homes and offices across the country suffer long electricity cuts as load shedding has become part of everyday life across Africa's second largest economy. Inadequate maintenance of the power plants and distribution networks is resulting in deteriorating and unreliable performance, which uh, is in turn leading to higher maintenance costs and uh, unplanned outages. The gold boom in Liberia has attracted young and old to makeshift mines in search of a better livelihood. But as the government has been unable to regulate the largely illicit mining sector, most of the findings are smuggled to neighboring countries. In Liberia, there is an unofficial and unregulated gold boom. Young boys under 10 years old work alongside grown men in dangerous conditions. They are all teenagers. But now you see that every one of them, they digging gold. 
Most workers live in giant encampments, which often lack basic services and are overcrowded. Illness and drug abuse are widespread. And despite the fact that nearly $17 million of gold has been appraised and the likely number is much higher, according to experts, the government only saw half a million dollars of that in 2013 due to illegal operations and gold smuggling to neighboring regions. Beyond this, the miners, young and old, often see no money for their work, according to the AFP report. At present, the youth mostly they are engaged in the illicit money section. And uh, it's counterproductive to disconnect them now from those sectors when we don't have we don't have optional employment for them. Despite the fact that Liberian officials agreed with the UN to suspend these operations in 2012, it has not been carried out because a lack of infrastructure in remote locales render the government ineffective in regulating the region. Still, there is a desire to move beyond the scenario. We want the international community to come in and then so they can provide jobs, at least bring companies, to bring companies to help us. Because if the company is here, you'll find so many people, more librarians working. For now, despite the danger, authorities are letting the trade continue as it provides work for a large sector of people who might be unemployed otherwise. Changing gears now with a look at innovation in sports and therapy with Channel 2 correspondent Noah Alon in Startup Nation. Noah. Hi, how are you? Good, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Well, we all have LinkedIn, right? Of course. So I want to tell you about Sport Jobs, which is basically the LinkedIn for athletes. Just oh, really? for athletes. Yeah, usually the way it happens is a coach will find a, a player, would look at someone, and they will find each other. This is how players uh, find a new job or new team. So what Sport Job is trying to do, it's an Israeli startup, um, just two entrepreneurs who are trying to do this. This is a platform specifically for athletes and for coaches, and it, it basically allows coaches to connect with these athletes and find their next players. So far, they have more than 3,000 athletes um, listed on uh, on this platform from almost 100 countries. Really? Uh, yeah, wow, most, of them, most of them are from the U.S. Yeah. And the interesting is that most of the teams that are registered on this are from Europe. So this might create some uh, new connections that we couldn't have created before, and it's very interesting. Interesting. Um, these guys come from um, an, excel an accelerator called A200 EISP. Um, you know, A200 is of course. Uh, yeah, the A200. IDF technology unit, right. and this accelerator is, uh, accelerator is run by their alumni association. And they only work with uh, with alumni from A200. So they used to, but recently it opened up for every entrepreneur from Israel, and let's see how it goes. I mean, they have very interesting technologies, and this is just one of them one that of is the coming examples up. examples of that, wow, that's yeah. fantastic. Now, I wanna move on to a completely yes. different subject, therapy. We all love going therapy. to therapy. Mm. I mean, let's admit it, we all love doing that. But what the kind only, of therapy? Yeah, but <laughs> well, the, only, the only problem with going right. to a psychologist is you have to go to their office or to the, to the clinic. We don't always have time for that. Sure. So Talkspace is an Israeli startup. It's actually based in New York. And what they do is they just um, allow you to go to the therapist, but not really go there. You can just text your therapist. Um, yeah. And you text your therapist. Text your therapist. And I, they text back, I presume. Yep, they do. They text back. and it, it's, it's should be something that is more affordable than regular therapy. You can pay from 10 to $50 per week, depending on how right. long you want to do this for. Right. And I'm not sure how good this is, but I know that- You should um, try it though. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I should, right? <laughs> About 100,000 Americans have already registered to this- um, 100,000 Americans? Yes, yes, in the past three years. They've been around for three years, so it took right. three years, but they have 100,000 uh, users, which is very, very impressive. And we'll see how it goes. I mean, this is a new platform, a different kind of therapy, I guess. It's it's different, but it's more you know it's it's easier. It's up to date. You just text your therapist whenever you need them. You don't have to wait until you have the next meeting. So it's very comfortable. I guess they could uh, give you therapy also on, on using you know mobile devices. Uh, you know if you have any issues with that. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Anyways, Noah Run from Channel Two. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Toyota City stands as a testament to the meteoric rise of its namesake, now the world's biggest car maker, with record profits and sales of more than 10 million cars globally. But these days, the town is looking to diversify with other industries and practices starting to make their way. You could call him Mr. Toyota. He drives a Toyota, works for a Toyota subsidiary, and lives in a place called Toyota City. In the 1970s, the company gained a reputation 
for taking care of all aspects of its employees' lives. It's a mindset that still exists, though these days some of the focus is geared towards green energy. At his home equipped with solar panels, Tomohiko keeps a close eye on electrical consumption. With the others on the estate, we talk a lot about energy. We talk about rising bills. When it rains for a few days in a row, we don't generate much electricity, and it's much like living in a normal house. So we talk a lot about the weather. Car sharing and electric vehicles are nothing new, but in its namesake city, the Japanese giant is road testing a fresh concept. This mobile app tells users the fastest and most ecologically sound way to get from point A to point B. It's a system that allows us to balance car and public transport use and keep traffic moving. Tailbacks are going to diminish, as will CO2 emissions, and at the same time activity in town will be revitalized. Once known as Koromo, it became Toyota City or Town half a century ago when the car production lines multiplied. Home to some 420,000 people, the auto industry is still a big player with 10 factories in the area. But according to the mayor, there's more to the city than just cars. Don't forget 70% of the town is forest. We're the biggest rice producers in Aichi Prefecture. We also harvest grapes and pears. It's true that we're a car city, but that's not the whole story. Toyota City has several faces, some of which are masked by the car. Yet with 40% of the workforce employed by Toyota and its subsidiaries, it would appear that the image of the city and the automaker are for now still inseparable. And now for our offbeat section with a look at some other newsworthy reports in Media Watch. Daniel Roth. How's it going? Good. So what do you have for us today? Well, uh, the answer to your question is it's actually not going very well. <laughs> According oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. to The Guardian, uh, they have this huge story. It's a, Really, it's a blowout story. The fossil fuels industry uh, globally receives $5.3 trillion in subsidies every year. This is a new report from the IMF. Huge deal. Uh, if that doesn't already sound like a lot of money, that's about $10 million a minute that, they're, that this industry will be receiving from the public at large globally uh, uh, in the form of tax cuts, in the form of not paying for damage done, um, uh, primarily, so some of the biggest areas are climate change uh, disasters, so floods, mm -hmm. tornadoes, mm -hmm. uh, tsunamis, uh, things that happen uh, surrounding climate right. change. Uh, some of them directly related, some of them indirectly how related. How do you put a number to that, though? You know, these things are always uh, fascinating to me because how do you actually really quantify damages? you know, that, are, that happen on such a large scale, like climate change. Right. It's a, it's a huge, huge question. And, uh, and again, this, you know, uh, it's, it's a huge, unfathomable amount of money. Uh, and to some extent, it's, it's estimations based on what we've seen before, what cl uh, climate scientists are expecting right. uh, to happen. It involves real estate. It involves also a major area is, is the uh, health risks that are caused uh, that, that are created by air pollution, which previously were thought to be a minor uh, uh, incident, minor reason for this kind of cost, mm -hmm. but has actually uh, come out to be in the trillions of dollars. You're talking about money that uh, governments are paying to, to keep people alive, to deal with mass death, uh, to deal with real estate damage, to deal mm -hmm. with unlivable mm -hmm. uh, places and agriculture dying. Right. Uh, you're talking about enormous amounts of money that, uh, that are coming because change isn't coming, essentially. Right. And right. That's, that's kind of at the root of this report, that, that uh, governments, rather than putting more money into renewable energy, are continuing to put the decision is being made, mm -hmm. albeit from a negative point of view, whereas uh, they're not paying taxes, they're not paying for damage done. 
uh, the these resources are actually flowing in, even though it seems like they're they're simply not paying for it. We're actually paying for it. Uh, right, right. right. The Someone always has to fit the bill, as they say. Absolutely. The renewable energy, just for context, uh, renewable energies globally look for about 120 billion a year in right. in subsidies. So it's minor compared to the cost. 5.3 we'll, we'll trillion, 120 that. billion. Right. Um, right. So. Right. A uh, huge report. I hope we can all hope this will have some kind of impact on the way we think about cleaning cleaning the earth. Okay. Uh, well, in conclusion, quickly, what is the next uh, topic? Yeah. Here? So, uh, interestingly enough, the advent of online TV. This is a totally different story. Is killing reality TV. It's a it's a nice little extra. Uh, the more people tune out of cable and choose their shows one by one online from Netflix, from Amazon, mm -hmm. uh, etc., they're finding it it's not worth tuning into reality TV and paying for reality TV even though it's cheaper. Okay, well, I guess we're going back to reality as it is in real Absolutely. life, right? Well, Daniel Roth, thanks for joining us. Thank you. And that is the end of our Economy Magazine for today, your daily source for economic and financial reports at I-24 News. I'm Benjamin Chong Thanks for joining us, and do join us again tomorrow for more on the economy.